Hey, it's me, Hannah. <sighs> Sometime last year, darling husband, a lover of parties and celebrations, lamented out loud that we hadn't gone to any weddings recently. And I reacted as any reasonable person with a touch of superstition with rage because I knew he had just cursed us to a year of expensive travel and those rare unclaimed weekends claimed. And as a result of his unwise manifestation, we are now headed into a two week period in which we will be attending three weddings. <sighs> I'm actually super excited, but you can't deny that weddings are kind of an expensive event. And since I'll be burning most of my budget on airfare and hotel rooms, I've decided to attempt to make my own wedding guest dresses using thrifted fabric and materials as best I can and using free patterns, if not self-drafted patterns. So the first wedding I'm going to calls for a semi-formal attire. So I've decided on a free pattern from Mood, the Anthea dress, which is a kind of trendy milkmaid dress pattern that might be above my sewing capabilities as a beginning sewist, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. And because the milkmaid dress can be a more casual silhouette, I'm going to attempt to dress it up by using this thrifted curtain for my fabric, which has a nice sheen to it, and I think can take it up a notch to that semi-formal level. So I've already adjusted the pattern to my measurements and I have cut out the pieces, so let's get to sewing.
Okay, the bodice is done. And I'm very happy with how this dress has turned out so far. This dress has already afforded me so many opportunities to try out tools I haven't had a chance to try yet. This was my first time using a buttonhole presser foot and my first time using a hemming presser foot. So I'm excited to add those tools to my tool belt. I still think this fabric is just perfect for taking a relatively informal dress shape and elevating it up to that semi-formal level. I don't usually reach for brown, but I do think that little bit of shine we're getting off of the fabric is gonna be perfect. Really all we have left to do today is construct the skirt, add the skirt to the bodice, install the zipper, and add a hem. And then we'll be done and ready for the first of three weddings. It is the morning of the wedding and I just royally <laughs> screwed it up. I surged through an extra layer of the dress that wasn't meant to get caught in the serger the morning of the wedding. Balls. All right, so now that I have emotionally recovered from that little snafu, let me explain what happened with dress one. The day before wedding number one, I decided I wanted to make the skirt a little form-fitting. I felt like with the fabric, just attempting the flowy versus the more structured dress was the way to go on that. So rather than completely deconstructing the skirt, I decided to just put the dress on inside out pin up where I wanted to alter the dress. A common practice in self-alterations as far as I know. The morning of the wedding, I decided I wanted a more polished finish. So I got my serger out and decided to serge the new seams on the inside of the dress. This is all three hours before the wedding starts. I wasn't paying attention to where my skirt fabric was and I fed some of my skirts to my serger and ended up cutting it right there like four inches in. So needless to say, I panicked and I just decided to wear something else. I do think I can salvage this dress, maybe do like a drop waist with some ruffles. I'm not super comfortable with the length of this dress. And I think a longer dress will help balance the kind of additional volume here at the sleeves and at the bust. But unfortunately this dress is just not the vibe for the other two weddings coming up. So I'm gonna have to put this dress in the to be finished project pile and go ahead and move on. Speaking of wedding vibes, let's go ahead and talk about the requirements for wedding number two as I go thrifting for some new fabric. The invitation mentions daytime cocktail attire, which I'm kind of interpreting as garden party-esque. So I'm thinking flowy and floral. I decided to go thrifting in one of my favorite local spots, Scrap RVA. And this place is like walking into an I Spy book and has at least two of everything. I bought a few things here, some fabric and thread, 
look through the patterns and things like that. And I almost bought this beautiful sewing machine, but last minute I decided against it. I actually ended up finding an unfinished bolt of this fabric at another thrift store. And when I came across this free pattern for the poppy dress, another one from Mood, I figured it would fit the bill perfectly. In the name of transparency, it took me a couple days to recover emotionally from <laughs> this mess. So I've only got a few more days to knock out two more dresses. I've already cut out the pattern pieces for the poppy dress, so let's jump back into sewing. The instructions for the poppy dress on Mood's website were not perfectly clear, so while I don't think the skills required to make this dress are that tough, I would probably still file this pattern under a sort of mid-range difficulty level. Puzzling the belt and the waistband together took me a few tries to get right, but luckily I got a little bit of help. I'm still not sure if I did it exactly right, and I'm not sure if I can really explain it. So if you're trying this pattern out for yourself and you're confused, drop me a comment and I'll try to help as best I can, or at least wish you a good luck.
dress number three is going to be an extra fun one as the bride and groom of wedding number three have requested that guests show up to this potluck style event in casual tie-dye. So I decided I wanted to use a simple white thrifted bed sheet and use my dress form to drape and draft up a dress inspired by the Alamea Suella midi dress and the Mimi G Simplicity S9597 dress pattern. Both of which were brought to my attention by Jade R. Solis's There's a Pattern for That series on TikTok. Then I will tie dye the dress along with a tie for my husband to wear to, you know, sort of match. Although I hand drafted this dress myself, I think I could have made adjustments to the Pay What You Want Matilda dress pattern from Cool Stitches to get a similar effect. So if you are looking for an Empire Waist pattern to adjust, check that out. I will likely give that pattern a go here in the near future myself.
Well, I just had the most fun, exhausting, but love-filled whirlwind of a weekend. Weddings really are just such a blast. And I'm honored to have been a part of all three of the weddings we were able to attend over the last two weeks. These dresses turned out exactly the way I wanted them to and were perfect for both of their respective weddings. I am actually feeling so much more confident in my sewing capabilities these days, even after failing so hard on dress number one. But honestly, that was such a fluke. I got through some really technical stuff. I got to use new tools, my, my buttonhole presser foot. Ugh, I'm hooked. I already explained the couple of hangups I had on dress number two with getting the back belt attached to the bodice and the skirts. Dress number three, however, basically went off without a hitch until most of the dye washed out upon rinsing it. In the future, if I do ever decide to make anything else tie-dyed or dye fabric to use, I definitely wanna make sure I dye the fabric first and then sew up whatever garment or uh, article of clothing I'm trying to make. But either way, I think it really did turn out great and stayed just blue enough to not be wearing white at a wedding. I know for a fact that these are going to both be go-tos for me to wear for the rest of the summer and probably for years to come. And I'm genuinely just so proud of how both of these turned out. And even dress number one, I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish with that. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. I got two new dresses to wear out of this. And most importantly, I had a blast making them. If you had as much fun as I did, it would mean the world to me if you would like and subscribe. And if you do, I will see you in two weeks for my next video. Take care.